Hello, everybody. This is Hal, and thank you to everybody who's been listening to We Got This with Mark and Hal. I especially want to welcome all of our new listeners due to the Maximum Fun Network. Uh, Mark and I are so excited to be part of this amazing network, and if you stay tuned at the end of the podcast, uh, you'll hear some ads uh, for some of the other great shows that are on Maximum Fun, and I encourage you to go to MaximumFun.org and check all of those out. But if you are a new listener of We Got This and you're enjoying the show, Please take a second to go to iTunes and rate and review us. It really does help us find new listeners, and we'd really appreciate it. A couple of other things. Two live recordings coming up of We Got This. One will be at Dragon Con, which is Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're going to be at Dragon Con, stay tuned to We Got This tweets on Twitter for updates about our upcoming performance at Dragon Con. We've also got a performance coming up in New York as part of New York Comic Con Super Week. More details are coming on that soon, but that will be the second weekend of October. So all that stuff is coming up soon. And without any further ado, on with the show. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. What's the best Pixar film? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hello to everyone, and thank you guys for coming. Yes. Um, this is our first time we've ever done We Got This in front of an audience. Yes. And, um... We, I'm gonna, I am so short. This thing is right up you, in my you're grill. You're sitting at a table with a desktop stand. And I'm still, and I'm this. still too short behind a desk. I'm, I'm behind a mic stand that's less than a foot tall and it's still too big for me. I'm gonna switch. <laughs> can I do that? Sure. Oh, that's so much this nicer. This is America. You can do whatever you want. Amen to that. Freedom ain't free. Yes. Should we bring out our special guest? We should bring out our special guest. You may know her from ABC's Castle. We know her as Pemily Stalwark from the Sparks of Auto and the Thrilly Adventure Hour. She is Molly Quinn. Molly, why do you have your purse? Are you going somewhere? Can you not be here long? Are you already ready to leave? Where do you want to sit? Who do you like better? I was supposed to sit in the middle, but I'll sit Oh, here, right sit here. in the middle. Okay, I'm going to sit in the middle. We were actually going to put you in the middle. We were both going to call you and see which one of us yeah. you gravitated towards. And then we're going to get Mark- a bunch of people to go out on the sides, and we're going to go full uh, Last Supper portrait on this. <laughs> I need one. Mark, give that lady a mic. You look like the Beatles at a press conference. Take <laughs> this one that's too big and weird for me to use. Great. Molly, how are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you guys for coming and listening to our personal opinions. No, no, no. These are facts. Oh. Yeah. Everything right. that we... This is a... Uh, listen... If you've been listening to this by now, stop arguing with us on social media. When we issue an opinion, it's the correct opinion. We stand by it yeah. forever. This is worse now because there are people who disagree with us who are in the audience. Many of the people that you are talking to via the airwaves, you could put your microphone out of your face and just talk to them directly. They are feet away. Right <laughs> I hear you. I'm hoping the mic didn't pick that up because I need to sound tough for my rap. How Have you ever sounded tough? Never. No, you know what? That's not true. I had that a boss. did not sound tough. <laughs> I had a boss one time who who accused me of going on a company trip for myself, like for personal reasons, which I had not because I had receipts and notes and, and everything. And I was like the Grinch's heart. Like I grew like five sizes and was – like it was I, – I wanted to – I kind of wanted to punch the guy. I kind of wanted to punch him because he would not relent. And uh so you're telling me the toughest thing you ever did was about, want to punch yeah, a guy. Yeah, thought about punching someone. But that was enough because he backed down. He knew. He saw the fire in my eyes. He saw some peacocking from Hal Lublin. Uh, Molly, what's the toughest thing you've ever done? Oh, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> you're from Texas. Is it like I've, I choked a cow to death? No, no, I have never done that. When is that a thing? Like, when did cow tipping get so extreme? It's like. You guys going cow tipping? Screw you. We're going to go choke cows <laughs> go to cow death. cow choking. Yeah. Well, one night, two people tipped a cow, and one of them was ready to walk away, and the other one said, no, let's finish this. <laughs> and that's how it started. It's terrible. I don't endorse it. I'm just saying it happens. We should be aware of the world that we're living in. That's horrible. No, I'm just from a rough place, and I grew up with brothers, so my whole life was, was tough. I was constantly, you know, trying to one-up everyone, especially with my bigger brothers or a giant i could usually only get them right before they woke up for school and things so i did a lot of evil like wake up like jump on them and pound on them and you were an alarm clock jerk sister yes 
Yeah. Right. Right. Weren't we all? Just all um, of us were. Look, speaking about how tough all of us are, let's talk Disney movies. Sure. Pixar. Um, Pixar. So our topic today Pixar. specifically is uh, is Pixar films. Uh, who suggested this? Who did we get this? I did. I did. Oh, I really oh, wanted to. I wanted to talk about now. this, and here's why. And I'm heartbroken uh, because I recently saw Inside Out, which I loved. That's the Kevin Klein gay teacher movie, right? That's correct. And uh, but we're disqualifying that movie. Number one because Mark hasn't seen it, and number two because it's possible some people who are uh, here live and some people who may be listening to it haven't seen it yet. So spoiler rules dictate. That we're going to allow a six month window before uh, we discuss that film as part of the Pixar canon. So that is off the table. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Molly, you uh, make us look bad by having extensive notes in front of you. Uh, did you want to? Did you want to just start on your note list and <laughs> Molly poke has holes two, in it? Two pages of notes, and not only are they two pages of notes, but they're the most well organized notes I've ever seen. <laughs> the yeah. handwriting is impeccable. It's like a craft project. Usually when we're doing this, the prep that we have in front of us is a phone with a Wikipedia page opened on it. That's where we're like, yeah, because that was in 1948. <laughs> Do now, Speaking we can, of, let me pull out my phone that's got my uh, Wikipedia uh, <laughs> list of Pixar <laughs> no, movies no, on it. I didn't it. do that. No, well, we, I wanted to be prepared because, I mean, before this, I thought you guys were really smart and knowledgeable about all things. Apparently, <laughs> you really no, haven't done your Wikipedia homework. No, Wikipedia is. The okay, podcast so is I working. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Molly, are you a big Pixar fan? Have you, uh, did you, I, I mean, you, the Pixar films have existed for the vast majority of your lifetime. So you grew up with Pixar. As yes. opposed to Mark and I, where uh, the first Pixar film was 95, I was 18. Yes, y'all are both older than me. <laughs> you are our guest here, Molly. Yeah. Oh, right, right. This is our house. Got it, Take got your it, shoes got off. Got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so Pixar was already a thing by the time you were cognizant of. Sure. Going to see movies. Like, yeah, Toy Story I was... Toy Story... I'm sorry. I thought it came out in 93. No, it's 1995. 95? Okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. Because my mother actually told me she took me to it when I was two. And she was like, this will be great. It's a kid's movie. And then when Sid comes out, like, in all those creepy toys, apparently I just made, like, the hugest ruckus, was absolutely terrified. And my mom was like, this was supposed to be a kid's movie. Well, I mean... It is still a kids movie. But it's scary. Like, you have to know that there are villains out there. I, I rewatched the uh, Pixar movies that I didn't remember as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, Toy Story 1 was one of those. And I was even kind of scared this time. I watched it and I was like, this is kind of terrifying. And also, it looks like that little girl is like abused. Sid's little sister looks like there's been like stuff going on. I got really deep into this movie. I'm sorry. Wow. Guys. You know, there, like, there are... She's in a, like, not abused physically, but maybe there's some like verbal abuse going on in the home. There are so many uh, theories about the world of the Pixar films and how yeah. they all connect to one another yeah. because in each film there are Easter eggs that are uh, that refer to the other films. Never in all the reading I've done, and there's been a fair amount, have I read that the younger sister... That Andy's younger sister was abused. Not Andy, Sid. Sid's younger oh, Sid's sister. Sid's younger. Oh, yeah, not that family Andy's. is. Yeah, that family is a, a mess. latchkey nightmare. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Look, if I you don't have... know where the tracks are, but they're on the wrong side of yeah. them. Yeah, that's that was my mistake. That's yeah, that why family... Andy's moving. That's why Andy's mom is like, we can't live. Yeah, here. we can't live on the, the wrong side of the tracks. The neighborhood has gone to S H I T. We got to move. Do you think uh, Sid grew up to become a cop? No. <laughs> Sometimes that's what happens with bullies. Not that all cops are bullies, but like I find that there are some some bullies that grow up to become cops. Or sure, I got pulled over sense. once and, and the cop gave me a wedgie and a, and a wet willy <laughs> at the same time. Okay. Really? I should probably call social services, right? Yeah, you, that, that's not okay. Why that's, do you need to be taken out of your home? Line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I don't know how municipal things work. Clearly, I'm so sorry. Your local government. Find out about it at government.org or organization.gov. So why don't we try to go in chronological order? Okay. 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 So we have the original Toy Story. Let's talk about. Uh, are, are we just saying the list now, or are we? Let's, let's d- take them one in. by one. Well, all right. I'll tell you what. Let's do. Are there any that we can eliminate right off of the top? Yeah, Cars Two. We can eliminate Cars Two, which I have not seen, but I'm aware is is a James Bond send up. Yeah. In which Lightning McQueen becomes a secret agent. Yes. And somehow Mater is still involved. Yeah. Yes. Because, because the tow truck him. from America is going to go to the big uh, Euro thing. What's wrong with that? Like what? 
I don't think that that's enough of an argument. I thought it was a really fun movie. No, it's it's, it's, it's a fun colorful? movie. It's a fun movie. It's colorful. But our job here is to pick the definitive best okay. Pixar film. Okay, fine. We can take out Cars. Too. And Mark, are you saying people from the South can't travel outside yeah, of the that's country? That's really what I was trying to say. No, there's no need for it. There's no need for a a southwestern tow truck. To be Tokyo drifting. To be Tokyo drifting. Yes. <laughs> did you, did, has that always been a verb, or did you just make it a verb? Tokyo drifting. Yeah, I, I like it. Is there is there a hyphen makes in that? Sense. Yeah, it's two, it's two words. Oh, is drifting? Or Not you mean drift Tokyo? hyphen ing. No, like Tokyo, no, it's Tokyo hyphen it's drifting. It's actually a space. It's just Tokyo space drifting. Like you're drifting. It sounds like that would be Tokyo. the phrase in the middle of a Yosemite Sam rant. Like Tokyo drifting. <laughs> Mark, you're an improviser. Surely you could have come up with words for the rest of that <laughs> Yosemite that. Sam rant. Nope. I'm also <laughs> doing a podcast and just did a physical bit. <laughs> We're breaking the walls of podcasting okay. and the rules of it as well. Can we go ahead today. and rule out Cars? Uh, I Look, I love the movie Cars. I do, too. I like it a lot. I think it's underrated in that too many people think it's overrated. Yeah. Like, it's too beloved by children for whatever reason, but that comes from John Lasseter's love of the car culture that he grew up with in Northern California, and it reflects that, and it, it does, like, uh, the, the Radiator Springs Racers at Disneyland. An excellent ride. Adventure. It's an excellent ride. Uh, actually, yeah. you watch it, you go, hey, you know what? Cars is actually a pretty good movie. Yeah. You don't go, boy, that was a dumb movie, but at least I have this ride. No, you no. remember sort of what's beautiful about that, although it feels like a stock kind of story it's been told. Well all of the Pixar films have that. They all have their they all have their beauty to them. They all have their canon of characters that they've created. None of these are bad movies. No. no. I feel it's less like we're eliminating oh, things. Except for Wally. What? Whoa! I, oh, Molly Quinn with Molly. the bombshell. Wally is the I cannot stand I I am no fan of Wally. Why are you no fan of Wally? What? You don't like adorable things? It's yeah. not adorable. Like it it's paints adorable. A picture, it paints a picture of the future that I don't want to live in. I don't want to watch that movie, especially in animation format. So do you like Blade Runner? Well, yeah. I but hate Blade Runner. Blade I hate Runner's, it so much. I hate it like three times. Hate it. I feel like we're equally hated by our crowd now. That right? We're split. Handshake. Okay. We shook hands. We're good. I love everything that everybody here loves. <laughs> Don't clap, Sean. <laughs> I mean, they made a roach cute, so I guess that's some what? kind of achievement. You really? I I'm I am a I Wally was going to be in my like that was going to be near the top of my list. It I would think be near it the is, top of mine too. I think Wally's an excellent movie. I think the love story in that between um, Robots? between uh, Puppy Short Circuit and that Apple Store lady uh, <laughs> is with the whole hand thing that they do yeah, and, the, I mean, and having on. the what's the old movie that's playing is it Meet Me in St. Louis Hello Dolly, Hello, Dolly. thank you okay, it's a, it's a beautiful well. Uh, well, look let's start this theme early which is me crying while I watch Pixar films yeah when I saw oh, yeah. Wally in the first two minutes I was I was tearing up not sobbing but tearing up because I thought it was so beautiful like everything they do has a, an incredible amount of detail in it mm-hmm. but that in particular the it's the it's first a planet full of garbage, and they made it a, like a beautiful thing to look at. And a, a thing, it, it was an v- entirely visual first forty five minutes of that movie. You're looking at, you're grinning like we're trying to sell you on this movie. We're not going to sell you on no. it, but we got to give it its due time. The thing I love about Wally is that first forty five minutes of no talking. Yes, that it's uh, and and that plays so beautifully. To uh, it, I think it sets up. Like a, hey, this is a global thing. This is not an English-speaking world story. This is a global story. It does lose points because everything looks really very realistic except for the people. Not that, uh, not that the morbidly obese part, but just like they look like Tex Avery cartoons that were turned into <laughs> computer animations. Yeah, sure. Like I it, lo- it kind of loses. Po- and uh, you have a live-action uh, president. Yeah. yeah, you do, and that's weird. And it's I a combination like, of humans and yeah. And I'm not a huge fan. Eve is the female robot, right? Yes, yes. I Eve. didn't really like her. <laughs> I thought Wally could do better. Well, like, did because you go in to get one of those Japanese all, sex bots? She's all flying around <laughs> and act like she's so great. And she's like, Wally, I love you so much, but I feel like she's just so flighty. And Wally, she's, is of so course, like she's genuine. flighty. She's flying. Yeah. No, no, that's not. Would you rather? I should use a different word than flighty, but I'm not sure what that word would be. Would you rather he hang out with like Cherry 2000 or something like that? I would that? rather him just hang out with his little cockroach buddy what? all the time. Hey, you know what? I 
I don't think you should be in a in a, in a romantic relationship. Instead, you should hang out with this cockroach all the yeah. time. <laughs> Nobody dates. That's what just I want yeah. for you. Yeah, and that's, that's the world I would like to watch and be in. Okay, so let's take Wally off the table. Can I? Since we're taking Wally off the taking table, off rest the table. in peace, Wally. Let me ask you a side question uh-huh. based on what you just said. Of any of these worlds, which of these worlds would you most like to live in? Oh, well, that's not brave. Brave? Yeah. What? Because you're oh, redheaded. Well, yeah. No, not because of the redhead thing, just because it looks amazing. But even, I mean, are we going to talk about Brave now? Because as much as I love the movie Brave, I think it's a little polarizing. It's very much a female-geared movie. Like, I know that guys like it, and that's great. But I can't say it's the best one, because it's a little, you know, it's a very strong girl power story about Mm -hmm. mother and daughter relationship, which, like I said, is awesome. But it's not super well-rounded. But that is the world I would want to live in. All that Celtic, you know drama and like uh, myth is really intriguing to me and you know she's climbing rocks and on her horse it's great I love that movie so much and the little brothers that turn into bears that's like the cutest thing I think in a Pixar movie actually those brothers are my favorite I will say that uh, that Brave loses points for the aftermath uh, what what the good people at Disney did with Merida after the movie came out and uh, they princessed her up and oh, added yeah. her to their collection of princesses. They made her dress nicer. They uh, fixed her hair differently, and they put her with barely, the rest of the Disney barely. princesses. She still had her cute round face. That's I mean, the look, thing she didn't but, want. The but, thing that she wanted the least would be to go out, hang out with those girls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, hold on. The other Disney princesses aren't bad. I mean, you have Pocahontas. You, I mean, Cinderella is fantastic, and then uh, who else we got? Look, we're I mean, not saying Jasmine, anything. Yeah. Right? We're not saying anything bad about the Disney princess. No, the Disney princess is a lovely group of people. Them. However, I feel like Merida and Pocahontas would be best friends. Sure, but this is about. <laughs> that's another episode. That's another episode. <laughs> Which <laughs> princesses <laughs> would be best oh, friends? That age old oh, debate. We are but doing a di- we are doing say. a Disney princess episode. I bet one of these days, right? Yes. But that's what I was going to say. If if like the whole doll thing, and and I agree, like it wasn't great, but I wasn't that upset about it. And I tried to think about it from Merida's perspective. If Merida was real, and they're like, we're going to make a doll out of you. I would be like, hey, how about you make her waist a little smaller than mine? I'd be totally fine with that. You know, like, make her just a little bit more pretty than I actually am if you're going to sell me in doll form. I mean, what's what's wrong with that? If you're going to sell me in doll form, I want to be uh, made of brown leather with white laces and football shaped, and I just want to be a football. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so right. we can take Brave off the table. Okay. We'll take Brave off the table. Yeah, I'm so fine we'll take with Brave. That. These are really, these are, I feel like a lot of this, not to... It may be a little disingenuous, like, well, we're going to take this off the table. There's really like three or four that are going to be on the top. These are all honorable mentions yeah, at this point. Bit. All right. Can bit. we get rid of Ratatouille? No. Yes, we can. I love Here's Ratatouille. Why. Here's why. One. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. You're gonna, this is going to change your life and your mind. Ratatouille is two different movies. Ratatouille is the story of a mouse who can talk to other mice and a story about people who can talk to other people. And then those worlds interact, but not really. Uh, I, I would have rather have stayed just in the mouse world for that. I would rather have just stayed with the rats, the talking, cooking rats, and watching his journey. Let the humans just be puppets. I don't care Dude. about... I don't care about the. I don't even remember his name, Marcel. Linguini. Dude, like I realize that you've spent all, that. Well, the mat, the the rat Which is, is a Remy, pasta. right? It's kind of weird. Yeah, Remy and Linguini are best friends. Yeah, I get that it's about our relationship with food and the emotions that it can evoke in us. But I want to see more talking rats. And they did not have enough. You've been for me. hanging out with those mouse guard guys well, yeah. too long. Or, 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 yeah, go watch. Um, what is that? Secrets of Nim. Secret of Nim. Yeah, you gotta got a lot I of talking rats in there. Nim. I want to see the Pixar version. The Guardian of where Angels. They have to thank cook. you for your service. More than um, the love of cooking and what food can do for us, what I really like about that movie is it's about passion. That's what I think is wonderful. And you're taking someone who isn't very good at something and realizing that teamwork is really important. Like through teamwork, they can do this thing together and it will be great for both of them. And I think that's a really important thing with friendship. Uh, in fact, the one thing I probably could live without in that movie is his little romance with the other chef. I felt like that gets it that's a little what I just cluttered. said. What? Absolutely. No, no, you no. But I like it. all the other human stuff. Yeah, it's okay. It's great. It's okay. I do like the fact that the rats clean themselves before they cook at the end. Well, that's all Remy's that's, idea. That's all. Yeah, I, that's all I can think about. And, and I don't think thing. I don't think one pass to that dishwasher is going to do the trick. Those rats, <laughs> they're are rats. Like, <laughs> they are bubonic plague yeah. infested rats. That's well, the Library of Congress of Diseases walking around <laughs> on four claws, making ratatouille. Listen, yeah, um, I will. I will agree to take ratatouille off the table. 
if only for uh, it being the second best Rats in a Kitchen movie. The first being The Muppets Take Manhattan. Sure. With the a beep 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 you pop pop pop, where the ones like skating around on butter on yep. the uh, on the flat top, and they never wash themselves, so you know that no. a ton of people are dying after oh, yeah. eating meals at that diner. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Rizzo the rat has more cl- chlamydia than a koala. Oh, um, <laughs> what is that? I are koalas know. known yeah. bears? Yes, koalas yeah. all have wow. chlamydia. They're stoned all the time, and they all have chlamydia. So they're the Warren Beatties of the animal kingdom. <laughs> When we were just in Australia, we were all, all three of us were just in Australia and together. And complained that you wouldn't let her hold and yes, a koala. Yes, yes. Juliana was like, oh, I wanted to go hold a koala, and, and Marks didn't want to go. So, and I'm like, no, I don't want to go. I'm not going to. It was more that you would not let her hold a koala. Well, look. You were, like, very adamant that you're going I to wasn't... not hold this koala. Look, if she gets chlamydia, <laughs> then we're, gonna, right. we're not going to go down that gonna... rabbit hole. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> All of this I is love to you, say honey. that uh, Ratatouille is off the table now. Okay. So we've taken Ratatouille off the table with a quick detour into chlamydia. What else is on your um, notepad there? Um, a bug's life. A bug's... Oh, <laughs> like two claps. Three. Bugs There's like three. at least three. But this wasn't even really a clap. This was just like I'm kind of praying my hands together to give... That's sort of like planning yeah. when you do that with your hands. Yeah, this isn't clapping. That's this is sinister. oh, just you wait. I, I like Bugs Life. I think I really it's like forgotten it. as a film. It's basically uh, it the Seven Samurai one. as told with bugs. Right. And they do a really good job of miniaturizing the world. There's still Bugs Land at California Adventure, which is not the basis of a good film, whether or not right. there's attraction based on it. But it's still. Uh, I think it holds up. It's got a great cast. It does. Uh, it it has a great cast. It came out the same summer as Ants, I believe. Which Ants didn't stand a right chance. Right around the same day, nineteen ninety eight. No yeah. chance. Um, I did like the cast in Ants because I will watch any movie that is Woody Allen and Sylvester Stallone teamed up as best friends. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> Whose idea was like? I got a great idea, you guys. Woody Allen and Rocky, best friends. <laughs> great. Here's a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Um, but this isn't about ants. It's I about like, a bug's life. Well, our reaction to a bug's life, I don't. I think it's good. I don't think it's going to win number one because no. all three of us, when you're like bug's life, all three of us went. All right. It's in my top. <laughs> it's in my my top. It's in my top five. like nine. It's in my top five. I actually okay. love that movie, and I think that um, what's the evil cricket's name? Hopper. Jiminy Hopper. Wrong. Played by Hopper Kevin Spacey. Is terrifying. Yeah. And then you have that one deranged cricket, like the one that has rabies or something that they cake around with them to like the scare koala. all the children. The, <laughs> the, the fearsome koala and like, cricket. Yeah. And he's like, come here, little girl. I'm going to hold you right here to the mommy ant gives me everything I want. Like it was terrifying. And I really like, I like my uh, Pixar movies to be terrifying. Yeah. I You're find, a villain fan. I'm a villain yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, and who did you say? Was it Kevin Spacey? Yes. Yeah, and that might be part of it too. I'm a huge. Uh, I kind of wish he had done his accent from House of Cards as uh, that grasshopper. A uh, flick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You work for us now, flick. <laughs> I've never flown into an ant colony before, but here's the thing: when you do it, you got to do it all the way. <laughs> Some people don't have what it takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah as, uh, he's, as he's cracking a beetle's neck yeah. at the very beginning of the film. We all remember yeah. it. The little, no, the little He's aphid cracking pet. the neck of it's Wally's little, roach. No, it's the aphid pet. <laughs> the remember? aphid yeah, pet. Yeah, the queen bee has a little aphid pet. It's like, it barks like a dog, but it's an aphid. Listen, if we're, we're not going to ding Disney on, uh, on animals not doing things exactly the way that animal does I just them. thought that was weird. I was like, why, why didn't they give the aphid its own little sound? Like, yeah. blah, 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 it, walks, it, it barks like a dog, and the ants walk like people. <laughs> well, don't ants. Oh, walk like people. No, right. they do not. <laughs> wrong, they don't. No, they do not, Molly. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're right. My brother did tell me that ants um, tasted like sugar when I was little um, and got me to eat. Quite a few ants um, one summer afternoon, and I was like, "These don't taste like sugar. They don't taste like anything." Um, and then my dad came outside and was like, "What are you doing?" I'm just picturing you with like ants just crawling all over your mouth, like, <laughs> "What?" My brother They're said they tasted sweet. <laughs> I don't know how many of these it's gonna take, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna yeah. do it. I'm gonna taste a sugar ant. Yeah. Damn it! I'm gonna eat these until they're good. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done that with something, right? No, no until it's nothing. cute. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, until it tastes. Until it tastes. Eat, you just cute. eat it until it's. I think I was peeking over your nose. This is a Stanford prison experiment. No, if I don't like something, I don't eat more of it. <laughs> um, all right. What okay. other movies do we have on the list? Okay. Uh, Monsters. Monsters Inc. Monsters really Inc. Great. A lot of a lot really of support great. from the from the crowd got here. Got someone who's like, eh, I could live without it. Oh, believe me. As soon as this. Are you guys going to wait to uh, tweet arguments at us until this airs or just immediately? Is it happening right now? Probably. I don't know. Probably. It's happening right now? Okay. <laughs> the whole table is shaking. Yeah. yeah. Because all our phones, phones constantly are constantly like, vibrating with feedback. Bzz, bzz. Um, Hold on. Rob Desmond. How dare you? What? Yeah. Yeah, we have to be careful about that, too. Yeah. So I'm like, I like a lot of the people that made these movies. I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't want to say look, we've, anything. Well, we've said they're all excellent, excellent movies. Pixar's not so put out a covered. bad movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I love Monsters, Inc., I actually, I may love Monsters University a little bit more. I, yeah, really, I have not seen Monsters but University. here's the thing. It's, it's a like, great origin story. And I like that. And I'm sorry. I'm going to spoil this for you because people have seen this movie. Yeah, six months. Um, years at this it's point. It's been a while. I love that Sully is a jerk. Yeah. Like he starts off as such a jerk in college. And I thought that was brilliant. I was like, yeah, he, he doesn't just have to be a nice guy. Like it gave him real texture. I like yeah. that a lot. And, and I would say that, that. You can't really enjoy Monsters University as much without having seen Monsters Inc. In that and way, cool. and this is maybe one of the few times I'll make a comparison like this. It's like The Godfather Two. If you've never seen The Godfather, The Godfather Two will be a mess that makes no sense. If you've seen The Godfather, The Godfather Two is possibly a better film, yeah. debatably a better film, yeah. but definitely a, a masterwork on par with the first film. Absolutely. Um, and I would put these in the same. I think Monsters University is a really, really good movie. I love... Just uh, as good as The Godfather 1 and 2. Just as good yeah. as... The, look, if you've seen Godfather 2, you're going to love Monsters University. Monsters Otherwise, University. it's not going to make any sense. <laughs> do they do that thing where they do the uh, the like the like Godfather legacy, where they mishmatch and put the thing back together? Have you ever seen them when they do that? Yes. They'll take the Godfather 2 and Godfather and rearrange them chronologically. Yeah, so it starts with Robert De Niro. Exactly. In Italy. Let's yeah. do that with Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University. All you have to do is watch Monsters University and then watch Monsters, Inc. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, we're going to put the Godfathers in there. Oh, great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Sully, listen. I love all the voice casting in, mm-hmm. in both. And I might be a little biased with Monsters University because um, Nathan did the voice of uh, Not John, familiar. Johnny Worthington, right? Nathan, yeah. Na- the, the, the Captain Captain Mal, Nathan Fillion, did a voice. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has his own little plush toy. I have one. Um, yeah. Anyway, I just like all the voice casting and... It's really fun, yeah. Yeah, they're very well cast films, but probably neither of them would be up the top. I would definitely say Monsters Inc. would be. Monsters Inc., if I'm looking at them objectively, would probably go a little higher on the totem pole than Monsters University would. We are running out of movies. We eventually have to have. That's all right, we're running out of time soon, too, at some point. We have 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. Um, What else do we have? Oh, Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo is a great movie. I love Finding Nemo. It's so sad. Those first, it's so sad. The whole thing is sad to me. Those first few minutes when like the mom fish dies, it's like yeah. that's great. And then the one little, the one little egg is left. Like that whole thing and the whole father son relationship is so wonderful. And then that son is a bit of a jerk and goes off and doesn't appreciate his dad and learns to appreciate family. And then Dory, it's just the relationship. Uh, like all like the you mentioned, the the mother daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Brave, the father-son relationship in Finding Nemo is another one of those. Disney or Pixar does a great job with familial relationships and understanding struggles that people have, and and the, what yeah, what the makes, safety versus um, e- experience. Sure, and I think what kind of puts Nemo ahead of Brave for me is that by introducing Dory, you have in a way a mom figure. Like, you kind of get this positive female role model, and it starts to kind of piece together this family, which does happen for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it had everything for me, is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, so I, I really like Finding Nemo. I'd say we put it aside as a, as a contender. We'll put it, we'll put it up for okay. contention. Okay. Uh, what about Up? Up um, is... Oh, it's man. It's the saddest Pixar If you want to movie. talk about crying during movies. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly, yeah. that opening 20 minutes of Up. Uh, hey, Explorer? Yeah, oof, yeah. Come on. I saw that movie in 3D, and yep. my glasses were soaked with tears to the point where I had to wipe them off four or five times before I could watch the movie. And honestly, I didn't. 
I didn't shake what happened to me in the first 20 minutes, so I don't even have a very strong memory of everything that happens afterwards. I have general flashes of what happened in that film, and that, that's why I would, that's why I would take it, take it off, just because. After the, the first 20 minutes are too brutal? I, yeah, and I will say, this is, whenever, I agree. my argument against Titanic is that the first 20 minutes of Up does in 20 minutes what Titanic cannot do in three and a half hours. I wrote that. I wrote that really? right here. I did. I said, uh, uh, no debate, uh, love story breaks my heart more than Titanic. I wrote that <laughs> on my notes. You also wrote, do you like Cheerios? Check this box if yes. Is that, was that note meant for somebody else? Did you draw sure. a box that says maybe? What you, yeah. This doesn't it's happen. A drawing this of a is dog not on here. And There's not. That's not on my list. Could be. You just wrote MQ plus HL like 40 times. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's now's, it. now's the time um, to tell, tell you how. It's happened. I love Oh, is that the big oh. announcement? Yeah, that's the big announcement. Oh. That's guys. the big announcement we're making. Um, yeah, so do we, do we need to talk more about Up? Uh, no, but I will say this about Up. <laughs> no, but I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> one last thing about Up. I remember after I saw that movie thinking to myself, because my dumb actor brain will frequently do this, I'm like, wow. If I ever need to be really sad for a scene, I'll just have to tell the director, I need 20 minutes in an up DVD, and I will be right back to set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And another great relationship between um, the old man and, um, oh, what's that little boy's name? Um, Russell, Russell, thank you. Um, another great relationship. Uh, one of my favorite scenes, really, probably in any Pixar movie, and because I did just recently rewatch Up, is when they're sitting around the fire, and uh, Russell's talking about his dad, and he's like... Um, what what's the oh god it's like louise or something it's like uh yeah louise says i bother him and i and i shouldn't uh call him anymore and uh the old man goes you call your mother by her first name and he goes phyllis that's what he's like phyllis isn't my mom and it's this great moment of just another different type of relationship that kids go through and it's just it's so wonderfully complicated and clear at the same time it's a good movie it's a great yeah, movie it is a good movie. I, apparently I, you know what I disney or what there. i keep saying disney pixar, pixar. Uh, what Pixar does really well is it, it got that got me thinking about the button that he puts uh, the, great button. The, the great button on the on his sash. Mm -hmm. uh, Pixar does a great job badge. with uh, yes, yeah. does a great job with props and using props to forward a story. I mean, mm -hmm. arguably, Tori Story is props the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's all, well, it's all about endowing, you know, the the imaginative endowing. Can we move on to the Toy Story movies? Or we I think we yeah, have we to. Should, because That's we have two left. of those. Is no, and, and, have, and we have Incredibles. Oh, the oh, the Incredibles. I would discount. How can we forget the Incredibles? Oh, there's an adamant Incredibles. Okay. The Incredibles is fantastic. It's uh, the visual design on that film is uh, like this '60s '50s sort of modern look, which I love. Uh, personally, but also a great voice cast. Um, Who's it? Craig T. Nelson is... Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Jason Lee is in that film as well. It's it's fantastic. The casts of these Pixar movies all sound like the casts of Robert Altman films. <laughs> like they're just these weird all-stars that you would never piece together. Yeah, but they all work. But they all work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Lauren Hutton and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, you're making up a cast. Yeah, I'm making up a cast. I was like, what's this? And, uh, and uh, Dr. Gain. Teeth yeah. and <laughs> Eric Clapton. Did you mean Dr. T? No, Dr. Teeth of the Electric Mayhem. Oh, you I, heard of him? No, yeah. I, I, I do not. But Plays that's the keys. Okay. okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm, I, That's you, you a guys different episode. Me. Oh, we are going to um, school you okay. some Muppets, Molly uh, Quinn. The Incredibles is, right a, is a great movie. Um, it's no, it's not Toy Story. Yeah. There Bless are three you. Toy Story films. Bless, Bless you. Sorry, and kidding. I think all three of them probably would be ahead of The Incredibles. Yeah. The third one is my personal favorite. Toy I feel Story like... 3 with all those characters. And it doesn't get messy. It all makes sense. You follow the through line. But it introduces just how many characters can be in a movie. It was incredible. Yeah. I feel like uh, the Toy Story movies in my brain are the gold, silver, and bronze. I'm not sure in what order. Um... Uh, though I do love Up so much. But let's talk about Toy Story before we make any final decisions. Okay, I'm going to take out Toy Story 2 because there's a Sarah McLachlan dog commercial in the middle of it. Yeah. When somebody Which is, loved me. Can yeah. I tell you the it's so depressing. That my favorite beautiful. thing about that movie is When Somebody Loved Me. The the super sad music video in the middle. And yes. She was happy. So was I. Oh, come on and she's playing with the Jesse and then she tosses the Jesse aside. 
for God's sake, you, you you have no soul, Hal. No, you know why? I know it's very sad, but it feels like the most obvious, like, I'm going to make you cry now. I want yeah. you to oh, yeah. feel bad, and now you have to understand who Jesse is and why why you should care about her. It just, it's, look, it's great, but it's okay. too much. When my mom too much would, by far, Pixar. You are on notice. When my mom would get mad at me, I would start singing that song, and it always turned her around. It was a great, it was a great tool. You are a, a manipulative, manipulative daughter. daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I would just start singing it very softly like I did <laughs> to you guys. When did anybody somebody else? somebody love me. Okay, fine. You can yeah. go. Uh, did anybody else just get an image of her singing that while the house is burning down <laughs> behind her? I can't stay mad at you. We're going to live in our car now. Um, I, yeah. So uh, let's talk uh, Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 3 then. Yeah. yeah. Toy Story 3 is, uh, I think, one of the best sequels of all time. The best third part, third chapter of a trilogy, maybe ever. Sure. And might be the victor of these three movies, of the Toy Story movies. I have to agree. I mean, that last scene when they're all in the furnace and they just oh. look, yeah. they accept death and they like hold yeah. hands. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. That was when I that cried is, during that, that moment Oscar is the worthy. most intense. It's an Oscar worthy. Like it's an Oscar winning I know. moment. I know, but that's what makes it great. Like it was worthy of the Oscar that it won. Also, or the ones. It won. It won multiple offers. The the little girl. Uh, the little girl whose room Woody winds up in, who eventually winds up in possession of all the toys. Yeah. The other toy, Jeff Garland. Uh, we like to keep it loose and improvisational around here. <laughs> it's such a great other world uh, yeah. Yeah. to explore. Absolutely. I actually. Uh, I have to agree with you. Are we? Did we just decide that Toy Story three is the greatest Pixar well, and film? We all agree. Yeah. We have. We all ag- agreed on that. I. I feel like this episode is really stressing you out, Hal. Uh, for those listening, <laughs> the, the, all of these have labels on them. This water label bottles. from this water bottle, he has turned one of these labels into blue sand. Yeah. Like, just sitting here and fiddling with this, like, oh, no, no, you didn't like this movie? No, no, no. Sure, I, you like Sarah McLaughlin? Great. All right. You know, I sing the song. <laughs> I just wanted this to turn out right. And folks, if you're listening at home and all other Pixar films, you're on notice. You're all looking up at a golden standard of what a Pixar film should be, which is a golden standard for what any film should be, yes. which is... Toy Story, Toy Story 3. 3. You've heard it here today. That's right. We the settled official, it once and for all. Once and for all settled. Hey. And no one booed, so they yeah. all kind of agree yeah. with us. Hey, the internet. Good. Guess Finally. what? Yeah. You can send all the tweets you want. You can argue on Facebook all you want. Send us all the emails you want. You're wrong. You burnt. Toy Story 3. Mic drop. Don't you come at us with no m- cars, too. So that is our show. Live, we want to thank uh, Bamfest for hosting us for this yes, show. Absolutely, this is a this is such a fun festival. We want to thank Jesse Thorne and the entire Maximum Fun family. Indeed, indeed. Absolutely, for welcoming us into their fold. Uh, we want to thank Molly Quinn, Molly our Quinn, very our special, special guest, guest, and our and our great friend Molly. Yeah. Where can people find you online? What, what do you have to plug? Oh, online, uh, I'm only on Twitter. It's Molly Quinn ninety three. That's right. Uh, and we have we we have ninety three. That's the year that Toy Story came out, right? <laughs> I really thought it was. I, I don't know why. I was wrong, okay? Mark? That's all we, all we needed to hear. Got Thank it. you, Molly Quinn. That's right. Uh, you have topics, and uh, we want to hear them. So tell us the things you want us to settle for you. Uh, we're, we got this tweets on Twitter. Or you can find us on Facebook. Uh, we got this. I don't know how any of this works. I can't wait. I just you wanted to see if you get say, it right. Here's I the just thing. wanted to see if you get here's it right. Here's the thing. The only one that I know yeah, for I sure now. is we got this tweets. So when you took that one, you're like, you do the Twitter one, and then I'll take the next one. I'm like, I don't know what I don't was, know what the next that one. That was is. a trial by fire, and you are a pile of ashes right now. Facebook.com forward slash we got this podcast, or, or on Twitter at we got this tweets, or on Twitter at we got this tweets. Hey, if you guys like using Twitter, we're on it at Molly Quinn ninety three. And you can email us at wegotthispodcast at gmail.com. Thank you to Mike Foreman for our wonderful theme song. And Jonathan Dinerstein, who does the underscoring, that, that brilliant uh, music that you hear underneath us at the beginning of every episode. And thanks to Ken Plume, who is our uh, who is taking pictures of us right now. Yes. Uh, thanks to Ken Plume, who edits our show and does all the technical elements for it. And we'll have a great time uh, sometime this week editing bicycle noises out of uh, this podcast. <laughs> For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. For Hal Lublin, I am Mark Gagliardi. And don't worry, everyone. We, we got, got this. this. We got this. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. 
Hello, buddies. I'm Travis McElroy. And I'm Andy Bolt. And we're the host of Bunker Buddies. We're a podcast where we're amateur survivalists and we talk about things like the apocalypse. And we talk about zombies and preparedness. What are you going to wear when it's the apocalypse? And you have no idea if you don't listen to our show. It comes out every Wednesdays on MaximumFun.org and on iTunes. Sometimes we try weird foods or we talk about where to camp or how to avoid getting eaten or any of these things. Yeah, so listen to us because it might just save your life. We'll see you in the bunker. Bye. Hi, everybody. I'm Justin McElroy. And I'm Dr. Sydney McElroy. Every Tuesday, we bring you Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine, a show about all the dumb, weird, terrible ways that we've tried to fix each other over the years. You know, some light summer listening. Maybe you want to hear about yogurt enemas, or why we tried to eat mummies for a while, or why drinking cholera diarrhea sounded like a good idea. That and so much more is waiting for you every Tuesday right here on the Maximum Fun Network with Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine.